Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at PID tuning, uh, particularly for Marlin-based printers, and we're going to use the Wanhao as our example printer. So the way I'm going to achieve this is I'm going to use Repetier Host, so I have it loaded. So one of the first things I have to do is set up connection to the printer. So I've already have this connected via USB to the Wanhao. And then what I need to do is go down here to Device Manager and find my port. So it's USB Serial Port COM3. And then what I need to do is come up here to Configuration. Click Configuration Printer Settings. And then come over here and enter COM3. Now I've already done this along with my baud rate of uh, 115 200, So I'm all set there. If you're not using... Um, Repetier for you know printing to your printer or whatever you don't have to set up the other pieces like printer shapes now I've done this but the main thing we want to do is be able to use utilize Repetier host to connect to the one how and send it uh, command so uh, again this should be uh, sufficient enough so we're gonna hit OK to apply the settings and close the dialog box now the next thing we're gonna do is come back up here to connections and we're going to connect to the printer so by clicking this, it might take a moment. So now notice it's turned green. So we have now connected to the printer. So the next step in this is going back to configuration at the top in the menu, selecting this, and then selecting firmware EEPROM configuration. I'll spit it out. So what we want to do is we want to scroll down until we find um, Heat Manager, Extruder 1 Heat Manager and it's set for three right now. This is actually dead time. Now I'll put in the upper corner of the list between um, the various options from zero to three. However, really there's only two you have to concern yourself with in this case, and it's, it's either one or three. So when we change this one, we're going to select PID and three is dead time. Now the one other piece that I want to point out is, are these um, uh, figures if I move in the right direction um, that we have here so we have notice we have PID P, PID I, and PID D and this, this this is where when we return we'll enter our form our constants sorry so we don't have our constants right now so what we're going to do is we're just going to click OK which is going to write that data to the EEPROM so now pretty much we're set from that aspect uh, the EEPROM is now configured for um, PID rather than uh, dead time. So now we're going to have to send it some G codes. But I want before we do that, one of the things I want to set up a couple things. So the first thing, if you notice at the bottom, I have toggled on my log. And I want to clear my log screen. Uh, the other thing I do is I have my temperature curve set up. So I want to show a couple different things. So I'm just basically showing the extruder temperature. Uh, I have my time period set for the past 60 minutes. I'm going to run a zoom of about five minutes uh, to show the aggregation. And then I want to build my average over 30 seconds. So again, um, the reason for doing this is so I can share with you guys what's going to happen during this process. Now, the next thing I need to do before I start with the G code is I need to activate the fan. Uh, because one of the things we want to do is create both a common heat as well as electrical signature um, for the, the printer for normal situation. The other thing I'm going to do is activate the bed and set the bed for 60 degrees C because I am going to format this for um, new a PLA test and my target's going to be 200 degrees C. So again, I've got the fan on, fan set to 100%, bed turned on, set to 60 degrees C. And part of, partly what I say when I say create an electro, electrical signature, so the heated bed draws a lot of power and so does the ceramic heating element for the extruder. So you want to emulate that same draw pattern um, it, that you'll, you'll see in actual production in the simulation here. So that's why we're going to turn these on. I also suggest moving the printer away from the home position and actually elevating the z-axis of the head a, a, a bit above the bed um, so the bed isn't having a direct influence on the uh, the hot end itself so with all this in place what we're going to do is we're now going to issue the m30 the m303 command so we're going to enter m303 
and then we're going to enter S200 and this in short tells us um, that our target temperature is going to be 200 degrees and then we're going to enter C10. So we're going to want to do this 10 times. So the one piece, because this is an iterative, uh, in, iterative an algorithm, you want to repeat it several times. The default is three. Um, I'd like somewhere between five and 10. So I'm going to take 10 for example sake here. Don't go overboard and say 100 because you're going to have, you will quickly see you'll have diminishing returns even at 10. Uh, but I think it gives a better example if we do this at 10. So now with everything set, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click the send button and we're going to watch this kind of go through. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that the red line is the one that you really want to pay attention to as it's ramping up. Uh, in the meantime, while we're waiting for it to come up to temperature, there's actually a couple different ways that we can do this, and I'm going to cover that while we're waiting. So on the Wanhao itself or most other Marlin printers with an LCD screen, you can actually go into Configuration Extruder, and I'll have an overlay, as you're seeing in the upper corner, where you can select the PID. Uh, now notice in the case of the one how it was verbose or is verbose uh, rather than the, the 0 through 3. And then also use, uh, using the thumb knob on the controller, you can also set the various P, I, and D settings. So a couple ways to skin a cat. Now I happen to like this way best with the uh, Repetier because you can see what more is going on and it's easier to set the numbers and spinning the thumb wheel a thousand times and, and things like that. Um, again, just to give a different perspective uh, on, on how you can make these changes. You can actually even go and edit the Mar Marlin firmware itself in the configuration H file and enter it there, but that I think is really getting to be a, a larger pain than just going about it this way. I also like to be able to see the response um, as we're seeing now going through the configuration. So also as we're waiting for this, I wanna talk about a little bit of what we're going to see here. So the idea with dead time is that there is a delay between when something happens in the response to that thing happening because there is a distance between the sensor and, and the event. And that can be the time that the thermistor responds to the time that the heating element actually heats up. And, and that sort of creates a, a somewhat of a jerky response action. Now, it's better than bang, bang, where, where bang is on and off. You can get some very fast oscillations and resonant swings with bang, bang. Um, and that's why I don't recommend it now. Dead time buffers that. Uh, and algorithmically in a very simple an algorithm to to minimize overshoots and undershoots however with PID PID adds a bit more intelligence because we've now modeled the system mathematically and we have a better idea of how it all works together so as you can see we've now come up on 200 degrees up here in in the graph and notice we overshot the 200 and now it's pulling back as it's moving through now notice that it's it's now turned off and is dropping around 190. Now what's important to notice here is the size of this swing because what's going to happen and this is one of the reasons for the C attribute is you want it to repeat this because every time it repeats it it should tighten up the the cycle until it gets to be almost that it looks like noise. So we've seen it to basically go through its first cycle set and now we're watching consecutive cycles come through. Now one of the things notice that this is going to happen either if you want to express it geometrically or exponentially in the fact is you see this jump here to this jump. Now this jump will be smaller but not a lot smaller as will this fall. But now as we start moving on into the cycles, one of the things we'll see is we'll see this actually become very, very tight. And one of the things um, I'm going to zoom into actually a minute and you can kind of see now a little bit better the ripples here. See the ripples taking place? So it's happening in, in a far faster context. Now I want to zoom back out a little bit to the five minute mark so you can kind of see it a little bit uh, better here. So you see this, how it's now starting to have a ripple and starting to hold now closer to the actual 200 line. And here we're coming in actually very, very close uh, to the line. 
and the idea is we want to get extremely close and the closer the better now having done this before I can kind of you know give you a little bit of a spoiler alert the want how isn't the best at holding a very tight temperature for a couple different reasons um, number one I believe is the way the power supply is handled and, and number two the controller itself I don't think the analog to digital conversion for the thermistor is that efficient in this particular control board is part of the problem again I haven't I haven't delved into it to know that for sure but I'm kind of guessing from the performance and having developed control systems before so one of the things that you do notice is up here um, how 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 loose this is versus how tight this has become uh, so this is actually a good thing so this is tightened up also notice down here in the log window this has gotten this has reported back that it's completed the first round of classic pit but it's not finished yet it's still uh, running its an algorithms out so as it's as you can see here and this will kind of give you a good overview of how it's all going to tighten up so now it, the it's actually finished down here so uh, auto tunes finished and we have our numbers right here so we have KP KI and KD so we're gonna want to write these numbers down uh, so we remember them because they will scroll away as we start doing other actions. So P is going to equal 10.91. I is going to equal 0 0.78. And D is going to equal 38.33. So now that we've written these down, what we need to do is to go back up here and... Um, in the configuration we need to hit back to firmware configuration and now we need to scroll down where I mentioned before down here where we have uh, PID P, I, and D. So for PID P what we're going to do is we're going to enter 10.91 and we're going to enter for I 0 0.78 and then finally for D we're going to enter 38 point three three and then we're going to hit OK to close this out and now we've written this um, to the EEPROM now one of the things you might be saying is hey okay so that's for PLA what happens if I want to print ABS because you know as we've seen in the other video there's a bit of non-linearity in in the um, uh, thermal system of the hot end and the one how well I'm going to show you another uh, interesting trick so we're going to go over here to uh, the slicer and what we're going to do whoops I have the tab up here already so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Cura and what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the start G code so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here under default G code and I'm going to enter um, PLA PID and then I'm going to enter M and then I'm going to, if I remember everything that I wrote down, I'm going to do 301. And then I'm going to enter um, P equals 10.91. So I'm going to enter my, my same values that I used uh, in programming the EEPROM. And then I'm going to do I07.78 and then D of 38.33 and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as um, PLA uh, PID 01 and then click OK and so now I've got this I've now added this to my start code so whenever I slice anything with this what's going to happen is it's going to optimize my performance for PLA so I could repeat the same process and do it for PET G for ABS and I think you kind of get the idea now this is the part that's really cool because pardon the pun of cool I guess but now I can customize the performance of my hot end to work with my different filaments and this is critical um, I can't express enough that you need to uh, you know have the system if you want good prints now if you're just hacking around and don't really care 
you know, so be it and I get that. But if you really want high quality prints, you're doing this as a production or a job shop type thing, this is really what you want to do. And you also can follow the same methodology only with a M304 command for the, the, the heated bed. Now, I don't have as much concerns about the heated bed as I do the hot end and having a very uniform temperature for my... Um, uses so anyways hopefully this helped you guys out on how to set up a pit for a uh, marlin based uh, printer um, and for the one house so you found it handy if you did hey give it a thumbs up it helps the channel supports the channel it's free it's just a click over the mouse and i appreciate it uh, second thing is, uh, hey, it's coming up on the holiday season. Don't forget to check out our swag shop up in the corner. A lot of great swag for holiday gifts for the maker and your family uh, or yourself. Hey, you got to have gifts yourself. And then subscribe so you get updates to this. Because in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to kind of pull all of this together and see what the differences are. And, and let's see what a difference PID made versus the other ones. And, and we'll go from there. Um, so, hey, see you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.